Yes, yeah, so this is beautiful. Um, opinions do differ. Uh, like, so the, this thing is called is a radar graph. And while this, it, while like connecting sacrifice to quiet move to advanced pawn, etc., is not super scientific to put it mildly. Um, I still think that this is a interesting way to visualize a player's ability with regard to tactics. Um, so, uh, you can question the accuracy of the numbers. That, but it wouldn't be the first time we've questioned the accuracy of a number on the site. Um, so, <laughs> wait, wait, okay, this is telling me I've solved 51% of the puzzles I've attempted. And despite that, I have like this 2300 performance. Okay, that's pretty funny. Um, because, yeah, half of the me doing this is, like, late at night or early in the morning, just flipping moves. Like, eh, that looks fun. Let's do this. And this extremely whimsical approach to puzzle solving can actually get you a rating. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. But um, what's useful about having this graph is that, like, if a beginner talks to you and they're telling you, like, how amazing they are at tactics you just point them at this little radar graph and they'll be like oh okay there are areas i can work on and there have been suggestions like what if we did this as a bar graph or some other kind of grip no like this is the one that strikes fear into the heart of the student um and like, okay, maybe it's a bit discouraging in a sense, because if you look at some of the puzzles, uh, so we've got improvement areas, right? Uh, so I have solved 54% of discovered attack puzzles, and I could replay the ones I failed earlier. Now, my rating's about 2300, right? So... I keep failing these puzzles over and over because they're rated like 2600 something and my brain just cannot handle them. They are just that good of puzzles that I just it's beyond me to be able to solve some of these. Um, it's just insane how difficult some of these are. Rook takes G2 check. So this one starts with the Rook sacrifice. Um, I don't remember how the rest of this goes. And so while I do believe in spaced repetition in general, some of these puzzles are just that amazing that I just get stuck on them. <laughs> I could just... Yeah, like, what am I supposed to do? <sighs> I forget if I keep guessing knight takes bishop or knight e3, but the one I keep guessing is always wrong. Um, but, like, there's this double check, or there's this double check, or there's this knight takes knight, which is also interesting. Knight takes knight forbids king g1. Um but has the disadvantage of allowing king h3. But then you could take the rook. And you've taken multiple pieces, and your king is relatively safe. Knight takes c3 check. Okay, yeah, it is this one. King g3. And then I can't remember. Like, I could just take the rook, or I could check here trying to win this, but the king goes up. And there's no material win in sight there. So just taking the free rook... I think is correct. Knight takes d1. But it takes Success. balls to play this. Um, so yeah, we got one out of five. Did I like this puzzle? Sure. Um, okay, and then this one. This, you have to take the knight. Queen takes f5. 
and then take the pawn and check here. And then instead of doing some other discover check, you have to do this one. King H1. Other discover checks are wrong here. The rook takes pawn is the only correct rook takes F2 discover check. check because it prevents Success. pawn f3. Did I like this one? Um, can I find something to like about it? Honest, it's annoying. G3. So. In one respect here, like, it's hard to find a first candidate move here other than queen takes knight. And uh, problemists will agree in general that, like, a very good problem, the best of the best of problems, will not start with, like, uh, an obvious forced move. Um... I mean, this can make for an interesting F5. exercise, Queen but like F5. adding in captures just to make the combination longer is frowned upon. Rook takes G King H2. Um, Rook takes F2 check. And then this last check is really the only King interesting H1. aspect of this problem. And I failed it multiple times, but yeah, like each time I think I played this or something stupid. I can't remember what, but. Oh, I played this, and like the queen can block on e4, or a pawn can block on f3, or something. It doesn't. It's not even clear like why rook g5 is so terrible. I should probably take a look at that. Rook so what's G5 up with rook? Check. Yeah, what's up with rook g5? Queen to e4. Oh yeah. So this queen is the e4. thing. It's like none of the combination matters except for this possibility. It's just a dumb problem that, King F7. I mean, King it can happen in a real game, but you're not going to learn much from it. Um, so category is discovered attack. Oh, okay. This one, this one is extremely difficult. I don't remember how it went. Um, was it queen g7 or rook d1? Rook d1, bishop blocks, queen takes pawn, then what? I don't remember. Rook d1 check. King e7. Alright, they didn't even block with the bishop because it's too easy a target. It's not possible to defend the target after queen takes e6. So, yeah, they have to sidestep that. Um, for check. some reason, this is King still e7. regarded as a Discovered attack puzzle. Um, right. Yeah, if you're going to make a problem where the first move is just play like the obvious capture or the obvious check, generally it's frowned upon to start the problem there. That said, it could be a useful training exercise, but just don't make every single problem that way. Don't make every problem start with a capture or a check. And um, that I've been complaining about that too long. There's no benefit in complaining this much about it. So, oh right. The discovered attack was after queen h7. Queen h7 check. The trick here is now queen h4, queen h4. Which sets up Bishop a discovery e7. once this pawn moves. Um... So that's the trick here. This is a really clever problem. G6 check. And that's why it's rated 2678 and why I've failed it numerous times already. It's very clever, but yeah, when this Lee Chess is saying that I'm bad at discovered attack problems, it's including this one, which is like nobody finds this queen h7 move. It's just too clever. There's a problem Chesscom gave you, where the king was in check. And everything except one specific move got you mated in one. And you just had to find the one move that don't get mated. Uh, yeah, I guess it's rated 2100 if, like, everyone's failing the problem. I guess that's how it gets that rating. 
So yeah, this queen h7 is extraordinary. Um, uh, very uncommon. You won't see it in your games, but also like king e7. Yeah, like this is a terrific exercise. You could spend forever thinking about this. Um, you'd have to brute force your way to see. There's this, which sets up queen h4. And then the king's boxed in. If like, they play king f8, you play queen h8 and queen d8 mate. So queen h4 sets up an unpreventable g6 discovered check, winning the rook on f7. And then g6 after... Check. Even after this, it's not super clear because, like, if you count rook, bishop, rook, rook, queen, queen. So this is just, like, the start of the combination. It actually gets more complicated after this. So amidst all this, you have to find, like, queen h7 instead of queen g7, and then queen h4, and then the discover check. And this doesn't decide the game just yet. Um... Although, yeah, I guess if they play rook f6, they get mated. I guess if they play king e8, pawn takes rook mates somehow. Uh, with the rook on d7 check and the queen over... Okay, I could see that. With king f8... Uh, I'm sorry, with rook f6, queen h7 check, king e8, queen g8 check. King e7, queen g7. Oh, and then the rook drops with check and black gets mated. So that's why king f 8 the king only f8. move here. And the problem ended because there's multiple best moves here. Uh, taking the rook wins, apparently. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. Is it clear enough to a person, after they've played g6 check winning the rook, is it clear enough to them why white is better here? Even though, like, if you just trade the pawn for the rook and give black a free move, um, black is fine. Um, hmm. I don't know if I like this problem. Despite it being very clever, and my liking it for that, um, like, in this final position, if it's not super clear... You see, continuation number one here that the engine recommends is queen h8, king, h7, king e7, queen h4, king f8. Continuation number one recommended by the engine is repeat moves to get the same position. Continuation number two, queen h6, king e7, queen h4, king f8. Repeat the position is recommendation number two. So the top two recommendations are repeat this position. Recommendation number three is pawn takes rook. G takes f7. Um, which presumably cannot repeat the position. Um, according to Twitch Recap 2020, this is your most watched channel of the year with 145 hours. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Then going back to Lily talking about the 2100 rated puzzle. Um, oh, well, I, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I don't know what to tell you, Lily, but like, uh, I have opinions about open source software, and I have opinions about um non-open source like proprietary closed software so i'm pretty firmly in the camp that like yeah using chess.com to get their tools as opposed to their content like they have video tutorials and other stuff live streaming they've all whatever content they have that's generated by people that's excellent i'm sure i've seen some of it it looks very good but the software itself is uh, not satisfying to me. Uh, but okay, back to uh, transport. Yeah, 145 hours. I don't know. Either you must have left that open in the background and I don't know what I was doing. But it doesn't sound right. Because I don't think I've done that much shogi. That, like, 
either that or you have attended like every one of my shogi things um but i mean i could still imagine like if you're not super hooked on the website um it's possible that i could be your most viewed thing maybe somehow you got like watching a vod and that directed you to another vod and another vod or something while you were afk i don't know it could happen or maybe if you're watching for multiple devices you get double hours or something that'd be interesting but yeah i guess thanks um glad to see the channels enjoyed um I'm just glad, like, it was interesting that uh, somebody was trying to encourage Zug to get into Shogi, and I'm like, okay, well, if Zug has a good spirit about it, um, somehow it has to be a playable game. Um, if he can remain so enthusiastic while trying to figure out all these things, then maybe I could give it a try. Um, something like that inspired it all. So yeah, after we take this rook, why don't they just take the pawn? Rook d7 check. Okay, that's straightforward enough. So that's why this bishop, bishop c6, c6 is played. Everything's still defended. Ah, <sighs> so one answer is king f2 followed by rook g1. Um which subjects the white king to a check diagonally. It looks scary. Another solution, evidently, is rook e1, queen c8, queen f6. Okay. Yeah, this puzzle's not satisfying, because in the final position, G6 check. as enjoyable as this attack is, it's not instructive. So, yeah, this puzzle is bogus. You'd have to play out a few more moves to demonstrate that you understand why White's winning this. Despite it being rated 2,678, this puzzle isn't hard enough. It doesn't actually challenge you to point out why g6 wins. After bishop c6, etc. You need to play out a bit more. It's not a good puzzle. It's entertaining as hell, but, um, yeah, it was not instructive. All right, so I failed this one multiple times earlier today, and I think I've memorized it by now. B4. So we're queen setting up this bishop, which would have checked the king and won the queen, or pawn takes, etc. So that was the threat. Um... In this position, the correct move is queen takes queen pawn. Takes and then this. B takes C3. And queen then B3. I forget, I think it's C2 check is the correct move here. And the idea is that you're going to take the rook and promote. Um, C2 check. Success. So queen b2, and then we take on d1. So did I like this problem? Um, I think in the final position it is clear enough that you just take the rook. You could take the queen, but uh, in either event, you will need to take C the rook to win this. To queen. Um, yeah, and then they take your bishop. Check. You take here. G7. Etc. And takes D1. huh, huh. I thought this was clear enough. Black does have two pawns to the good. Black's king is safer. Um, knight f6, bishop f3 to protect the pawn. Uh, black still two pawns to the good. White's king is still endangered. Well, in fact, wait, why is bishop f3 necessary? What's Knight this about? 
Why bishop f3? Is the idea that just that we really want to move this bishop so we can give the knight somewhere to go? Because the knight, if it moves to b3, is not going to have a future, perhaps? Yeah, okay, so the fact that we're like up two pawns and uh, white's pawns are all on light squares, as is the bishop, yeah, this is winnable. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, I guess my standard for puzzles is they have to have some instructive value. Um, but it's fine for everybody to have their own standard. But I think this is instructive. Like, you're up two pawns. Um, your opponent has, like, a tremendous, uh, really bad bishop. And, um, assuming you find this knight f6 and just don't just hang the h pawn or if you find like even the bishop exchange might be winnable although it's a lot harder um how much harder is it if you don't Rook find knight of six one. like bishop if you offer this board. bishop exchange which is just silly but if you do it um uh, they don't have to take they can move the rook and threaten to take your pawn but you're still much better here because like your king and knight can defend everything what does that even look like? King F7. I'm curious. Oh, they're not exchanging. My head hurts. Why would you play this position and not exchange? Is the D pawn that vulnerable? Yes. Yes, this knight on C1 has no way to defend the pawn on D5. So if they were to do this, um, they'd be scrambling for a way to defend this from one, two, oh, not that. They're scrambling to defend it from this, 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 and this. So, yeah, that's a very difficult prospect. And so they'd be trying to use the king, and the king's not the right piece to use here. So, anyway, yeah, that's clear enough from the final position that it's winning. Um, yeah, obvious puzzles are super annoying. So, that's been my, one of my two enormous gripes with puzzles, and Lee Chess has vastly improved. Um, I still praise Chess Tempo a lot, but Lee Chess puzzles have improved a ton. And I'm not so sure that Chess Tempo is better anymore. I used to be firmly convinced that like the ones I encountered on Chess Tempo, it was clear from the final position who was winning. And you would not see obvious puzzles like every other puzzle. Um, a number of the candidate moves would not be so clear. Now here I am playing through the problems I failed. So like, as we're looking at these, um, I guess bear in mind that like these, because I failed them, these are not obvious in general. Um, so yeah, a number of the Lee Chess problems either are obvious or um, have some really difficult, crazy solution that like I would have to spend so many minutes to figure out. That's alternates or oscillates between the two and so yeah i take this whimsical approach when i'm puzzle solving that i will just guess moves i've kind of given up on the idea that i could actually figure these out because either i'm gonna guess and it's something super obvious or it's just a hopeless mess and there's no way i could have guessed it there's really nothing in between um but that said, a lot of them uh, fall in the interesting category. They're just, uh, because we're still excluding like 90% of possible puzzles, at least I think, in most of my chess games, um, when I find a combination, 
usually somewhere in the combination there's at least one point where I can choose A or B and both moves are okay. Leech Us is excluding that category of puzzles because there's not code to handle it and it's really complex I guess. But yeah, when I'm playing actual games uh, I need to put my thinking cap on but Sometimes there will be more than one valid answer. Um, I have seen one case where Leeches does handle that properly. If there are two checkmate and one moves, both of them are accepted. But in general, I think um, it's not allowed because sometimes if there are multiple best moves, it's because one of them gets you back to repeating the original position or an earlier position, um, which doesn't show that you actually know what you're doing. I don't see a problem with that, but uh, reasonable minds could differ. So, yeah, I don't remember this one at all. I've been stalling. The answer's not come to me. Like, this is super tempting. Um, I think when I did the first time I tried Rook Takes Pawn, which is just ridiculous. But I was just so out of ideas, so I picked it anyway. I think this has to... No, is it really Rook, Rook takes, takes Pawn? H7. It is. So now I guess Pawn Takes Pawn instead. I don't remember this. Is it King this check? No, is it this King check? Is it this King check? Is it King this check? H7. Is it this King one? Is it this over King here? Is it H7. this? King takes H7. Is that this? King takes H7. Is it this? King takes H7. 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 I have no idea. Puzzles are hard, man. Yeah, I think this might be our last puzzle for now. Do I just ask for the solution again? I've seen it already. I have to keep asking for it every time I come here because this is not an easy problem. Um, oh, this Nine one. Check. And then this Rook one. I saw this the last time F I was here. Check. King H6. Yeah, once it pointed out the King first move, H7. I saw the rest. Uh, this time I missed that. Maybe next time I come here. So, sure, that was cool. Let's repeat it. Why not? So, we take the free pawn, and they have H7. to take the rook for some King reason. I guess because rook g7 is threatened. And then we do the fork, and we do the scuppered attack, and then we take the queen. And then this takes us back to the dashboard, because there is no next puzzle in that category. So, yeah. We check our improvement areas, and out of 11 discovered attack puzzles, um, we're doing okay. But yeah, opening puzzles are the ones where I suck the most. So we could do a new opening puzzle that I've never seen before. I give up. <laughs> uh... Queen takes, king f8, queen d6. Yeah, that's just... Wait, no, queen d6, king g8. Knight e7, king f8, knight g6, king g8. Um, where's the mate? I don't know. But the only reasonable first move is queen takes pawn check. check. So it's a bad yeah, problem. Man. But... Um, the rest of the problem could be interesting. So, queen d6, king g8, check, king f8, check, king g8. Wait, no, if the knight goes to g6, 
then the knight can't go to c7 anymore. Oh, but if the king goes to e8, then there's queen e5 check and you win the queen with mate. So the king has to oscillate between f8 and g8 while your white knight goes basically anywhere it wants. Um, so there's no harm in queen d6 because it's the only reasonable move here. Queen d6 check. Success. And the problem ends without explanation. Uh, oh, what's with the move voiceover? Sorry, yeah. Uh, I had enabled speech synthesis over here instead of standard piece moves. I was earlier talking about how if I had a digital board, uh, a physical board that integrated with a computer, um, I would use that to echo the opponent's moves. And then I would input moves on the physical board when I wouldn't even have to look at the screen. I could just play only looking at a board. So I don't understand. King here, 97, right? Yep, 97. King f8. Knight anywhere? 96, knight f5, knight g6. All win for some reason. Alright, our knight c6. Oh. Oh. Well, that's funny. Oh, okay. So the only reason, like, if you try to do this, um, yeah, they're just going to go back here. And the only thing you could do to win is to repeat the position. I mean, you could get an attractive position this way. It's attractive, but this could theoretically be survived if they sack their queen for knight and bishop. It would be an extremely uphill battle, but could maybe be survived. So yeah, you have to sack like this now, and like that. And good luck. It's not that hard, but it feels uh, a lot harder than it is. G4. That's cute. G4 threatening G5. Yes, yeah, fast and furious as that is, this looks stronger. And then like rook f8 and recastled by hand and sure rook he1, king g8. Yeah, this is not easy. It's not super clear why the material advantage of queen versus two minor pieces is worth a plus six. So really, the trick here, if you want to win, is this knight c6, where you get a queen for one minor piece, or better. Um, a queen e5 check. Queen e5 check, winning the queen for nothing? That's devastating. That's funny. So yeah, this is a lot cleaner, because you have... You're just up a queen for a pawn. So do I like this problem as it was presented? No, it was absolutely ridiculous. Because, like, we check, we check, and that was the end of the problem. Like, yeah, black gave up here. Um, whereas if you didn't see knight c6, you could have an uphill battle ahead of you. You're still winning it, but... Yeah, so that was a terrible problem, but that's okay. Uh, wait. I was going to say this game looks familiar from my own games, um, but this position must be ever so slightly different. So, yeah. If you don't know this tactic, now you know it. That's a fun one. Um... So, quiet move. Actually, no. Wait, hang on. A move that does not make a check or capture. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Bishop h3 is a quiet move. Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, so, yeah, that was an okay one. 
And here, I think it's just this check. 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 Three bishop. Whatever. Capture the defender. Uh, yes. Technically, we are capturing the defender. I would contend that, like, the motif here isn't capture the defender. We don't actually care if we captured it or not. Um, this is actually more about um, interposing a piece between the defending piece and yeah, interference is the correct motif here. The fact that they actually exchange queens instead of playing knight c3 is immaterial. Yes, exactly. So interference is the tactic at play here. Anywho, um, so apparently we're okay at openings. So you can see here's all the puzzle themes. Lots and lots and lots of themes. Really clever stuff. Um, unfortunately, some of the tags, like, might be misapplied. I don't know. There's just a lot of puzzles to be tagged, and it's so easy to mess up the tagging. But, um, hey, look, we've almost got a million puzzles. If I refresh... Okay, yeah, we're still... Um, about 10,000 short of a million. That's cool. Um, so you can see those are all the themes. Here's our dashboard. Did I improve? Is opening even listed here? I guess not. Endgame is listed. But, um, train analyze improve. You can see our improvement areas. Opening has gone from top to second area to improve. Because we got a few problems correct. So, that's kind of cool. I forget, there was one category in particular. Uh, there was one category in particular which was really entertaining to play. I think it was like Pawn Promotion. So if you were to pick, uh, I want to only play puzzles which have the theme of Pawn Promotion. Um, I mean, there's attacking F2 or F7, but yes, yeah, like you could choose that. I want to only practice one category and you could probably boost your rating a bit if you know exactly what the idea is. Zugzwang was entertaining too. <laughs> like, oh, mate in one. Wait, you could play mate in one puzzles? Hang on. Hang on, we're going to get the highest rating ever. Yeah, okay. No rating points for me. <laughs> uh, can you imagine, though, if you picked that category and you're like, I'm just going to run all the mate in one problems. and Easy. Back rank mates, mother mates, whatever. I don't know how these get scored anymore, but some of these were fun to run for a bit. 